Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Within the Frame. I'm Handan in Seoul. As the global spotlight continues to shine on South Korea's vibrant cultural landscape, one aspect gaining increasing recognition is the expanding influence of Korean schools worldwide. From bustling cities to remote corners of the globe, Korean schools are emerging as hubs of academic achievement and cultural exchange, captivating diverse students with their innovative curriculum and rich cultural heritage. To talk more about the expanding roles of Korean schools, we have Jung Kyung Sun, Vice President of the European Association of Korean Schools. She also serves as the President of the National Association of Korean Schools in the UK. We also have Cho Sung Yong, President of the Association for Korean Community Language Schools in New South Wales in Australia. Let's start with you, President Cho. We hear there are over 50 Korean schools in Australia. Isn't this quite a lot compared to other countries? Give us an overview of the schools in Australia. As part of 2024, there are 56 Korean community language schools operating in four branch of consulate in Australia, with a total of 665 teachers dedicating themselves to educating 4,700 students. Among them, um, 32 Korean community language schools under the Sydney Consulate General have 356 teachers instructing 2,562 students. We also have schools located in New South Wales and Australia. The significant number of schools compared to other countries is largely attributed to the proactive support from the Korean government's overseas Korean agents and the grant support from the Australian government's community language school program. Also, teachers and parents interesting of education of Korean language. This is a big uh, portion of business. So the, the, the scale and the number of Korean schools in Australia is much larger than one might expect. And I'm sure many of our viewers would agree with that. And, and we're just talking about Australia. So when uh, broadening the scope to other countries worldwide, the, the prevalence of Korean schools becomes even more pronounced. Uh, now, uh, Vice President Chung, drawn in by K-pop and K-dramas, there are over 13 million Europeans involved in online and offline Korean wave related communities. Uh, that's according to the Korea Foundation. Is the explosive popularity in Europe leading to greater interest in the Korean language? Well, yes, it certainly is. In many countries in Europe, including the UK, there has been an explosive interest in Korean culture as well as Korean language. Despite the perception of the UK as a relatively slow adapter compared to some European nations, the interest in learning Korean has significantly increased in recent years. I teach Korean at the Korean Education Center in the UK and the World University. The level of knowledge my students have about K-pop and K-drama is so impressive. I sometimes wonder how do they know so much and so well. Many students start learning Korean out of interest, but end up deeply immersed in both in language and culture. This has led a remarkable increase in students undertaking topic or pursuing degrees in Korean studies. For instance, the number of applicants for the test of proficiency in Korean, known as topic, has doubled in just four years in the UK. Well, we all have that experience, right, where we fall deeply into a movie or a pop star. So we want to uh, learn more about them, about their country and also their culture. Uh, I did a bit of research and according to a language learning app, Korean is the second fastest growing language uh, that's uh, in the world after Hindi. 
And, and a, a study by the University of Council of Modern Languages also showed that the number of university students in Britain taking Korean language courses nearly tripled uh, in recent years, which really shows uh, the soft but immense power of a Korean wave. Now, President Cho, Australia is a country known for its rich cultural diversity and multi-ethnic population. The number of South Korean nationals and their descendants living in the country is also on the rise. Tell us about the students seeking entry to Korean schools. Who are they? Yeah, the Australian government has advocated for multiculturalism for nearly 40 years. It is creating an environment where people from various ethnic and racist coexistence. We Korean community are also part of a smaller ethnic group. When I first started a uh, Korean language school, people in the Hangrakyo, around 2010, most of the students were children of Korean immigrants. However, nowadays, Many children from multicultural families are attending Korean school. Possibly, my case, at the Joyful Korean language school in Waterloo that I operated, about 95% of the students come from multicultural backgrounds. This is partly due to the demographics of the city area. Other Korean schools follow it. I think, perhaps, the way, along with changes in the content market, such as Netflix and YouTube, the advancement of Korean movies and drama, and the rising international status of South Korea could contribute to these factors. So before it used to be mostly uh, children of immigrants, but now a lot of students are from multicultural families, which leads to our next question, Vice President Chung. The mainstream force of the uh, overseas Korean community is shifting from first generation immigrants to 2.0 and 3.0 immigrants who have been localized. It appears Korean schools play an important role in connecting younger generations with their Korean roots. Tell us more about this. Well, the history of Korean immigration spans over a century now, and the mutual correlation between Korean community and Korean school is very close. It is undeniable that Koreans ded dedicate to education wherever we live. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that Korean communities are now gathering around the Korean schools. Well, Korean schools are actively engaged in developing curriculums for the, the third and the second generations of the Korean diaspora, aligning with the overseas Korean agency's effort to promote Korean identity education. As a result, the curriculum goes beyond simply teaching Korean language to include aspects of Korean culture and history, such as the Independent Movement Day or the Korean War and the small but important island, Dokdo. This comprehensive approach aims to cultivate the understanding of identity, not through, not through biased or imposed means, such as an inheriting Korean identity by default, but through education that empowers individuals to shape their identity as Koreans in multicultural society. Well, this can be viewed as a form of diaspora. Also, we want to apply the concept of globalism, which harmonizes globalization and the localism to Korean school. Globalization definitely is uh, the term that we hear a lot these days. Uh, and it's also interesting to observe how uh, the shift from first generation immigrants who once tried hard to blend in in, in foreign countries uh, to younger uh, generations who are now uh, trying to reconnect with their Korean heritage, which is quite the opposite. And uh, Korean schools uh, certainly are playing a pivotal role in facilitating that reconnection. Uh, now, 
uh, Mr. Cho, for the locals who enrolled at Korean schools, it'll also provide a chance to learn about Korean culture and history as well. Uh, but it may be quite challenging to teach from scratch as they have no prior knowledge or experience. How do teachers address this challenge and what type of textbooks are used? Um, teaching history and culture in Korean school depends not only one textbook collection, but also on the determination of teachers. To address this, our the Korean Public Language School Association holds annual teacher training workshop with the support of the uh, overseas Korean agency. It is believed that by inviting um, exceptional instructors to teach methods of instruction along with history and culture alongside Korean language and by attending these lectures, education education motivation will be revived. They can feel teaching confidence. Actually, it goes without saying that teachers who have attended the overseas Korean school teachers training workshop, which is held in Korea, supported by the overseas Korean agency, EDA, return to teaching with great passion, actually. And specifically, teachers who attended this year workshop were deeply moved by a lecture titled by Why Korea is a Proud Country by Lee Kitchell, the newly appointed head of the Overseas Foreign Agency, and expressed their willingness to actively, um, actively um, participate in the promotion of Korean development project. It is hoped that the um, Korean school teachers training workshop supported by the um, Overseas Foreign Agency will be expanded to reach more teachers. Furthermore, uh, when local Australian school principal participated in Australian school principal exchanges program in Korea, they became captivated by the attraction of Korea and uh, become understood for Korea. If this project, the Australian school principal exchange program in Korea, is expanded, I have no doubt that it will help promote Korean history and culture and elevate Korean status. Uh, Mr. Cho, you briefly mentioned about the newly launched uh, Overseas Koreans Agency, and according to various reports, the agency plans to vastly expand the number of Korean schools worldwide and also send more talented educators uh, to teach not only the Korean language, but as well as uh, the Korean culture, as well as history. Uh, and so hopefully that will contribute to further enhancing the quality of education in Korean schools. Uh, certainly a very bright an optimistic road ahead. Uh, now to you, Ms. Chung, inform us about how Korean schools are established overseas. What are the required criteria or standards or conditions? Well, let's begin with defining Korean school. Korean school is an informal educational institution established by overseas Korean community or organization with the purpose of providing education in Korean language, history, and culture to overseas Koreans. Well, these Korean schools are typically registered with the relevant overseas consult. So the conditions for applying to register as a Korean school generally include, one, the founding entity must be a non-profit organization or group leader, which may also include religious institutions. Two, there must be a minimum number of 10 students enrolled on a regular basis, excluding temporary or occasional students. And three, the curriculum must consist the minimum of three hours teaching per week covering Korean language, culture, and history. Well, these criteria are general for Korean school worldwide, so specific requirements may vary depending on the regional circumstances, such as the size of local Korean communities or the distribution of Korean schools. 
President Cho, Australia has selected the Korean language as one of the subjects in college entrance exams. What significance does this hold? Um, Korean immigrant children as well as local Australian are showing a significant increase in interest. Korean language has been adopted as a second foreign language subject. And for this purpose, the admission director and staff works in the Sydney consulate are making great efforts to implement Korean language for language classes in public and private high school. In Australia, uh, in our case, just as our generation, but my the United States is it's economically, culturally, and artistically while learning English as a foreign language. At the same point, learning Korean in Australia or all around the world could be uh, greatly benefit Korea's international status and national interest. It also brings pride to uh, Korean immigrants living in Australia as they receive attention without being overlooked. Furthermore, there are many practical benefits in both business and everyday normal life in Australia. Well, this really is a significant change, isn't it? Um, I also I lived abroad when I was in elementary school back in the 90s. I went to, I also attended Korean school every Saturday. Uh, but back then, I still remember my foreign classmates asking me if I was from North Korea or South Korea. Uh, but now uh, some universities are installing Korean language as one of the subjects uh, when entering college. Uh, truly a fascinating change. Uh, now, Vice President Chung, Amid the increasing roles of overseas Korean schools, the government plans to substantially expand the related budget. Over 1,460 schools in different parts of the world that educate overseas Koreans about the Korean language, history, and culture will enjoy the benefit. We want to hear your thoughts on this. Well, indeed, it is good news. The support from the Korean government plays a vital role in sustaining Korean schools. Well, in addition to annual funding, learning materials such as textbooks or curriculum guidelines also influence the selection of curricula for Korean schools. Well, the announcement of a 24.5% rise in funding for Korean schools this year compared to the last year is undoubtedly positive news. The significant increase comes as a relief especially after facing a decrease of about 15% in funding last year. We hope that this increase will help mitigate the previous shortfall and ensure the continued operation growth of Korean schools. We are so definitely... Definite. <laughs> Sorry, go on. And certainly we are really happy to hear that news. We are definitely pinning high hopes on that. Uh, President Jo, what are your goals as a leader spearheading Korean schools in Australia? Um, I simply see that it as an um, obligation and a duty. Anyway, um, my goal, my duty is to create a happy environment for teachers to teach children joyfully and to ensure that each school can develop easily by disseminating government support and information and uniting together. If I may add a few more words here, uh, without government support, grand schools would find it difficult to stand on their own. I express deep gratitude to the overseas Korean agents of the Korean government for their annual support. Additionally, I extend, I extend sincere thanks to the consulate and its staff for their hard work for Korean school. I also express deep gratitude to the Australian government for supporting uh, Korean schools under the name of Per Capita Grant. Lastly, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to the hardworking Korean community for teachers. 
they uh, they are uh, really big about some of their, their Europe. Thank you. And Vice President Chung, we also want to hear about your ambitions in leading Korean schools in the UK and in Europe as a whole. Yes, well, there are a total of 22 Korean schools in the UK, where the European Association of Korean Schools currently registers 121 Korean schools across 29 countries in Europe. However, the actual number of schools may exceed the registered figure. The impact of Korean wave may vary across different countries in Europe, Nevertheless, it is certain that we are experiencing an explosion of Korean wave. For example, in France, 16 out of 19 Korean schools have higher enrollment of local students compared to overseas Korean students. Similarly, the Korean schools in Netherlands also enroll a significant number of local students. Moreover, there is a noticeable presence of Korean language classes in enrichment programs at local primary and secondary schools, particularly in the UK and France. In France, over 20 local schools offer Korean as a modern foreign language as part of their main curriculum. In the UK, Nearly 70 schools run Korea After School Korean Club, supervised by the Korean Education Center. Well, the dedication and professionalism of Korean school teachers are, cannot be overstated. Many of them work on the voluntary basis and re receive minimal compensation, yet they often actively pursue qualifications as Korean language teachers. Most of the associations of Korean schools host the annual workshop for teachers to go further their studies. So, my commitment is not only to expand my Korean teaching or education to locals, but also to ensure the continued and stable operations for Korean schools. Well, the focus will be on developing institu institutional systems and plans tailored to the circumstances in each country, as well as providing support for teachers in their professional growth and career advancement. Additionally, I aim to foster networking opportunities for my students. This approach will empower our next generation educated in Korean identity and global citizenship at Korean schools to serve as bridges connecting countries. Well, hopefully uh, all of your goals can be attained through close coordination among uh, overseas Korean communities, the government, as well as various other civil groups. Uh, thank you so much, Vice President Chung and President Cho, for sharing your valuable time with us tonight. Thank you for having me. It was really great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And that brings us to the end of this show. Thank you for watching and be sure to tune in same time tomorrow to join our conversation. Goodbye for now.